You guys remember when I wrecked my 3900X? I pulled a Verge big time. Somehow, after the dozens of times I've installed Wraith coolers, I ended up installing and securing the cooler incorrectly over the A4 socket, ended up bending many pins on the CPU, and four of them inevitably broke off because they were so far bent that by the time I tried pulling them up with a needle, uh, they were already so weak and brittle, they just snapped off. So four missing pins on the substrate here, and I tried booting with the four missing pins and I get no post. Uh, I posted my results in the video. Of course, I got made fun of, totally my fault. I understand uh, why some of you would be upset seeing a $500 plus dollar CPU ruined by senseless mishaps, but I think there's a way to fix it. And uh, this was actually a suggestion I found from uh, on Twitter actually from Steve uh, over at Gamers Nexus said that he had a similar issue with one of his, I think it was a Zen Plus chip. Ended up using an AM4 board dropping dedicated pins into the holes in the socket that correspond to the missing pins on the CPU substrate. So yeah, let's give that a shot. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So what you're looking at here is a Ryzen 5 2400G. It is essentially my donor board, donor chip for lack of a better phrase. This has been crushed by something. This is pretty hideous and uh, disturbing, frankly, to look at. But there are some pins that are not bent that we can break off. I have a little pair of wire cutters here. Uh, this actually might still be too big. Maybe we'll just take a needle and kind of bend back a few pins that we're gonna use here. Uh, worst case, they break off, I don't find them. We have plenty more to use. Although many of them on here are totally bent out of shape, wouldn't wanna use those. You want the pin to be long enough, of course, to make contact with both the bottom of the socket and the bottom of the CPU substrate. So yeah, wire cutters, we're gonna see if that works. Try to break off four pins, keep them long enough to make contact. The other half of the equation, the other half of the puzzle, is gonna be placing those pins in the correct socket holes, correspond with the blanks in the CPU. We'll give it a shot. I'll give you some, uh, some close-ups so you can see what I'm doing. If you wanna follow along, maybe you or in a similar boat. You can resurrect the CPU if you do this correctly. So let's see if I can. All right, yeah, I'm really starting to think that the uh, wire cutters are too fat for this kind of job. What I really wanna do is get some on the corner here. So something like this one right here. Let's see if we can get in there. The other thing is gonna be, once I break it, I'm sure it's gonna go flying. So I'm gonna cover it. Okay, that might be long enough. I'm not even sure if that's in focus, probably not, but that's a, that's a small pin. We won't know if it works until all four are in, unfortunately, because we don't know which pins on the 3900X are simply ground and which are for data. All right, so what I ended up doing was ditching the wire cutters all together. The tool was just too big. That's what I kind of suspected uh, right when I started using it, I realized that. And what was happening was I was cutting too high above the substrate so the, the pins were not um, being cut down to their full length and I was worried about, uh, again, proper contact. So uh, what I ended up doing was just taking my, my fingernail and kind of wiggling each of those pins back and forth enough to where the uh, metal became very brittle at the base against the substrate. It would eventually just flake off. And I ended up with basically as long a pin as I could manage. And you can see there's not much left on the substrate save uh, the initial solder point. So we're, we're kind of, yeah, this is as good as it's gonna get. If this doesn't work, I'm really not sure how else I can make these any longer without just starting from scratch and using some strands of copper wire, which I guess we can do, so we'll see. Hopefully I don't have to, it's gonna take a lot of work. Now recall, everything we see on the CPU side of things is going to be essentially mirrored in the socket. So uh, we can align the pins like so, but when we flip it upside down, everything's right flip-flop. So I need to be careful about, about that when I go about identifying which of these holes uh, corresponds to the missing pin on the CPU side. Now I've got a set of needle nose pliers here to make sure I am dropping these pins exactly where they need to be dropped. One other thing I clearly did not think about was the fact that this socket physically moves when you release the retention arm. So I'm not entirely sure how I should have done this if I should have done it with the 
lever up or down. So this might get me a lot of hate in the comments, but I really don't see another choice here. So I'm gonna remove the top half of this socket. And, oh, this is really cringe. Like, I have no idea what I'm, I think this is how you do it. Okay, well, yep. We're all in now, boys. Just gonna rip this bad boy off. Well, part of it. Okay. And pick up the other part of this. I don't want to touch those pins with this. Okay, that'll work. Uh, I don't see the pins for, yeah, I don't see where those dropped at all, which is interesting. Also, you can see the way that the socket is built. When the retention arm is up, the entire CPU assembly slides to the left. And to the left, uh, you can see that each of these little pin sockets is shaped like a V. So over to the left side, uh, the V is wider, so you don't necessarily have proper contact with each individual pin. Uh, but then when you pull the retention arm down, the CPU slides to your right, and that is where the V narrows, and that's where you ensure contact. I totally ditched the plan of using the donor CPU because those pins, I think, were just too short, and they were falling through the uh, through the, the socket, which I yeah, I'm not sure if proper contact would have ever been made in those cases. So what I ended up doing was just taking some copper from some, I think 12, 14 gauge speaker wire I had. Uh, I double wrapped it so that it was sure to make contact with both sides of the V and shoved those double wrapped sides into each of the missing holes on the CPU. So it's all mirrored. Uh, I'm just gonna end up cutting these down as close to the socket as I can with some wire cutters. And yeah, at that point, I'm just gonna cross my fingers and hope that hope the CPU boots and hope I don't short anything in the process. This is really janky, but at this point, I'm all out of options. All right, so I've cut them down pretty far. They are sticking out just a bit, but they're not tall enough to where if they get bent one way or another, they'll cross over and uh, short it out with another pin. So uh, I'm gonna try it like this. Worst case, I can cut it down just a bit more, but I'm gonna see if the CPU sits comfortably over uh, the socket with the height of these kind of makeshift pins the way they are. All right, attempt number 5005. You can see I've cut down the pins now, which are, these are essentially just double wound uh, thin copper wires. And I've pretty much got them level with the rest of the socket. So there should be pretty flush contact between the CP and the socket now. And uh, we should also have contact between the pins uh, embedded in the socket and the substrate of the chip. So moment of truth now, we're gonna install the CPU, see if it, go and do that right now while I'm still filming. Go ahead and drop it down. Let's make sure that it sits flush. That will kind of remind us uh, that uh, we picked the right sockets to drop these pins in. And it looks like it does sit flush. So I'm not gonna touch anything else. I'm gonna install the uh, stock Wraith cooler and see if the system posts. I wanna be very careful about how we set this cooler on top. The CPU. CPU is definitely bouncing around a bit underneath there. I can see it being picked up on one side depending on where the pressure is here. So try to get this mounted ASAP. Okay, power supply is on. You can see the motherboard is lit. I had to switch motherboards because I think I bricked the other one. Long story, I'll talk about it later. Anyway, I am ready to try. So let's click the power on button. Let's cross our fingers. Boom, baby. That is a post. So you can see right there, Ryzen 9 3900X. I'm not lying to you guys. It's the only 3900X I have. So it'd be kind of sleazy even if I did try to pass this off as working uh, because I did get it to work. I can now tell you that if you run into an event where a pin or two breaks off of the CPU itself, you can do what I did and possibly get it to work. It took so much trial and error to get the pins to sit just right in the socket and uh, I, had to, you know, I ended up breaking one of my boards in the process. So you have to be very careful. It is very tedious. I've spent hours getting this thing to freaking post, but I'm so happy I was able to. I'm not gonna overclock, I'm not gonna do anything. I just wanted it to post so I can give it to uh, my now part-time editor, who I'll introduce at some point. 
but uh, this is awesome. This saved me like 500 bucks. I'm cheap. So we've confirmed that it posts. It's the next day, by the way, it's why I'm wearing something different, but that's not the entire story. Just because the system posts doesn't mean that it's gonna be stable in the long run. We're not gonna know if it is stable in the long run until we install an operating system and test some programs. This again is going to Nate, who is actually here today. Nate, you wanna show him your thumb? There you go. And I don't wanna give Nate a system that only half works. So we're gonna make sure that it is stable before it goes to him for future edits. So let's start building. Okay. There we go. Now we take off the back plates and we insert the vertical mount. Is that good? Uh. Nate, you'll know you peaked once you're able to get insanely good shots of me wiring front I.O. connections. HD audio going right there. The fans. Do we have enough fan headers on this board? Probably not. Okay, we're gonna try to do this without using fan hubs. Uh, you're just gonna have kind of like random fan connections on this board. <laughs> Change of plans. This one's going up here. Nate, if you pull that off, I'll be really impressed with you. <laughs> let's just, let's try to see if the graphics card fits in a vertical orientation. I'm not sure if it's gonna because of the cooler that we went with. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna fit. I mean, this is a really big card, like front to back. So when you turn it vertical, it it's probably gonna hit this. Let's do a 1080 and just see what it looks like. I think this one's gonna work. It's gonna be really close. Let's try, let's try. I really want this to fit because it's a really unique look. This was one of the best Pascal cards you could buy a few years ago, so it still holds its own. In fact, in the used market, you can get these for around 300 bucks. They are great uh, value for money if you can find them for around that price. I'm cheap. Also super important that you get the front IO wiring done before you install this bracket because once you install the bracket, there ain't no way you're getting under that. Tell me what you think so far. It's just what the basic layout of your build's gonna be. Clean up as you go. Trust me, it pays off. So let's see, you've got 24 pin, you have an eight plus four pin for the motherboard, but we can get away with just using an eight pin. The extra four pins usually for like serious overclocking. We have two SATA drives plus a SATA for the RGBs. Ladder on in. Pepsi. She's like a dumpster diver. All right, the last thing to do, wire up storage drives, cable manage a bit, we'll be good to go. All right, so this just slide right back in like so. Thumb screw to secure. And uh, next we've got the hard drive, which is this bad boy. Also, super sorry, it's only a 5400 RPM drive. I'm cheap. Make sure this latch is disengaged. All you gotta do, something like so. Push all the way in. Boom. And you just gotta flip it up. Whenever you want access to it, if for whatever reason you wanna remove your hard drive, all you have to do, this little lever here at the back, pull on that. It's just magnetized. And there you go. You have access to your hard drives again. We already have SATA data. Connected. You could just leave it like this. Looks a little messy. Cool thing about the land cool too. Get these little covers to clean things up a bit. Lock it in with a thumb screw. Other panel. Just gonna go like this. Okay, so you can see we've got 3900X, 12 cores, 24 threads. We have package temps here and hardware monitor. Just gonna see how hot the system gets, see if we get a blue screen of death or something like that. That would tell us more than likely there's something wrong with the uh, connection. I don't have a feeling though that there's anything inherently wrong. Also remember we're running the stock, you know, the, the Wraith cooler. So this is kind of to be expected. So about 80, 81C, system's getting pretty uh, loud, but I haven't tweaked anything in the BIOS yet. So, capping about 85C, 86, and it looks like frequencies capping at around 4 gigahertz flat. 88C at the package. Okay. And we're almost finished here with the Cinebench run. So that's good. I mean, no blue screen here tells us at least the system's running. Yeah, it's definitely not 
the quietest system or the coolest. But uh, hey, I'll take that score. 7133, that's over a 1950X Threadripper chip. That's 16 cores, 32 threads. So uh, definitely reaping the benefits of 7 nanometer here. And the system is not crashing. So yay, Nate. All right, so now I open Prime 95. This is going to be like a worst case scenario. I don't like using Prime 95 because it just, it, it offsets unrealistic loads into the CPU. Um, could be good for like testing the absolute extreme stability of an overclock. But uh, at stock here, our temperatures are still at around, what, 90 C? That's pretty hot, but remember, stock cooler, 12 core, 24 thread, not too bad. Um, and our frequency frequencies are reflecting that. So across all 12 cores, seeing around 3.8 to 3.9 gigahertz. And that's to be expected, of course, the, the CPU is gonna kind of throttle its frequency according to the thermal headroom that it has. But uh, we're not getting any errors at all running Prime 95 which is pretty awesome. All right, so good news, the system is stable. I uh, wouldn't have really known that unless we had built the system all, all together and, and tried stuff with Windows. Again, this is, I have no idea what system the SSD was uh, synced to before, so I'll need to do a clean install just to make sure there are no driver conflicts. You could also cut into performance, especially if you were running an Intel system and then switch that SSD to an AMD system. Uh, so we'll get that straightened out, but good news is, like I said, the system is working and uh, we don't have to, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to dread any more of the loss of a $500 CPU. So uh, the way that uh, I was able to pull this off was definitely risky, definitely kind of sketchy, but it, I mean, if you're in my boat, you really have nothing else to lose. I mean, the CPU is already dead as is. So um, I guess the worst thing that could happen is you kind of brick a motherboard, but that's going to be really difficult to do um, if you're taking your time, which I'll admit I wasn't doing the first time around, hence one dead x570 board so if you guys like this video give this one a thumbs up we appreciate that i think nate will enjoy this pc he's been using a laptop for the longest time and um i mean it was a gaming laptop but it kind of subpar right actually his laptop has a problem we're gonna have to address in a future video you'll see that here soon but uh, thanks for watching if you guys want to leave a comment do so down below consider subscribing if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one my name is greg thanks for building with me